Nisha and I'm going to explain to you the concept of direct and inverse proportion in this video. By the end of this video, you'll be able to understand the concept of direct and inverse proportion with real life examples and the method of solving word problems involving direct and inverse proportion. As we know that proportion is divided into two parts, direct and inverse proportion. But when the two quantities are in direct and inverse proportion, for that, we need to look at some of the real life examples. Here, one of the example of direct proportion, where if you buy more number of pens, the cost of pens will become more. As you can see these arrows, if one uh, quantity increases, uh, the other quantity will also increases. And if the number of uh, pens, the quantity of the pens decreases, the cost of the pens will also decreases. Let's look at another example of direct proportion. More number of books in a bag means more weight of the bag. And if there are less number of books in the bag, we'll have less weight of the bag. We can see that they are directly proportional to each other. So two quantities are said to be directly proportional, where as one quantity increases, the other also increases. And as one quantity decreases, the other also decreases. Let's look at one of the example of direct proportion where a school buys eight gallons of juice for 100 kids. How many gallons do they need for 175 kids? Just jot down the given information in a form of a ratio, gallons and the kids. Eight gallons for 100 kids and X number of gallons for 175 kids. As the problem is of direct proportion, so we have to write in a form of a fraction that gallons over kids is equals to gallons over kids or you can write it down x1 over y1 is equals to x2 over y2 where x represents the number of gallons and y represents the number of kids. After putting the values in this equation we can we will get the answer 14 gallons will be required for 175 kids. We can observe that as the number of kids increases the number of gallons will also be increased. Now let's look at another example of direct proportion. If y is directly proportional to x, and when x is equals to three, then y is equals to 15. What is the constant of proportionality? This is the first part of this question. In the second part, they ask if x is equals to three, what is the value of y? So let's find out that how to write down an equation which is connecting x and y. As they are directly proportional, so the equation connecting y and x is, y is equals to kx. k is a constant value and once you put the value of x and y in this equation we get the answer of k which is 5. So the answer for the constant of proportionality is 5. We put it back in the equation y is equals to kx the equation will be y is equals to 5x. In the second part of the question, it says, if x is equals to five, what is the value of y? Put the value of x in this equation, y is equals to five x, we'll get the answer y is equals to 25. We can clearly see that as the value of x increases, the value of y will also increases. The graphical representation of direct proportion is always in a straight line and passing through the origin. Let's look at some of the real life examples of inverse proportion. More number of men employed, less time to build wall. You can see the arrows directions. Less number of men employed, more time to build the wall. So they are inversely proportional to each other. Another example of inverse proportion is more number of taps less time needed to fill the tub. Look at the arrows directions. As number of taps increases, the time decreases. Less number of taps, more time needed. So more taps, less time, less taps, more time. So they are inversely proportional with each other. Two quantities are said to be inversely proportional if as one quantity increases, the other quantity decreases, or as one quantity decreases, the other quantity increases. 
Now the example of inverse proportion says that if 15 workers can build a wall in 48 hours, how many workers are required to do the same work in 30 hours? Let's jot down the given information in this way. Workers, hours, 15 workers, 48 hours, and X number of workers, 30 hours. As the problem is of inverse proportion, we have to write it down in a product form. Workers into hours is equal to workers into hours, or X1 times Y1 is equal to X2 times Y2, where X1 represents the number of workers, and Y1 represents the number of hours. After putting the values of uh, values given in the question, we can get the answer X is equal to 24 workers for working and completing this wall in 30 hours. We can see as the number of hours decreases, the number of workers increase. Another example of inverse proportion is if y is inversely proportional to x and when x is equal to 3 then y is equal to 15. What is the constant of proportionality? They are inversely proportional so y is equal to k over x. After putting the value of y and x in this equation we get the answer k is equal to 45. The constant of proportionality is 45, hence y is equal to 45 over x. The second part of this question is, what is the value of y when x is equal to 9? y is equal to 45 over 9 and y is equal to 5. We can clearly see that as the y, the value of y decreases, the value of y increases and the value of x increases the value of uh, y decreases. The graphical representation of inverse proportion is always in a curved shape. To summarize this video, uh, I'm going to tell you some of the bullet points to remember. If two quantities are directly proportional, then as one quantity increases, the other also increases. If two quantities are inversely proportional, then increase in one quantity results in decrease in other quantity. When y is directly proportional to x, we can turn it into an equation y is equal to kx. When y is inversely proportional to x, we can turn it into an equation y is equal to k over x. Just remember these four bullet points and you will understand the concept of direct and inverse proportion. Thank you so much.